Medicine that helps is bitter. That's what we were told when we were children. But it is especially true for adults. Medicine for highly specialized hospital treatment is expensive. Over the past five years, medical expenditures for hospital medicine have more than doubled. This, of course, raises issues about the financing of these pharmaceuticals, since most hospitals are public and financed by the Danish regions. So it is eventually us taxpayers who have to pay for it. So the question is, why do pharmaceutical expenditures increase so fast in the hospital sector? Does it have something to do with the organization of the market for hospital medicine? And how is this market organized? Medicines for the use in public hospitals are publicly tendered through a central purchasing organization called AMGOS. A tender works like a reverse auction where the procurement agency asks who can provide this medicine for the lowest price. And the company who makes the best offer gets the right to supply the medicine for the price he offered. Auction theory predicts that if tenders work optimally, each competitor has an incentive to make an offer that just covers his cost to produce and deliver the medicine. So we would expect that we will have low pharmaceutical prices in the hospital sector as soon as there are two competitors in the market. So the question is, why do pharmaceutical prices increase faster in the hospital sector than in the retail sector, where medicine is not tendered? Does it have to do something with the tenders? Are they, for some reason, not working optimally? Are they not attracting enough competitors? Or are there enough competitors, but they collude to keep prices up? Just as an art auction is unlikely to generate a high price for a painting if there's only one potential buyer, a tender is unlikely to achieve a low price for medicine if there's only one potential supplier. But due to patent protection, there are many medicines for which there's only one um, producer. So the question is, how can tenders um, generate a low price in these markets? How can they affect prices in these markets? And how can they generate more competition in these markets? Or are pharmaceutical prices increasing primarily in markets where patents have expired? And there are many potential suppliers, but they collude to keep prices up. This would be the worst scenario because in this case, pharmaceutical companies would have little incentive to de develop new uh, medicine and access to old medicine would get even less affordable. So the question is, are there any elements in the tender that may facilitate collusion? Can we observe collusion? And how, how can we generate more competition in these markets? These are some of the questions that my PhD project uh, tries to find out. So I hope that I can contribute to the understanding of how pharmaceutical companies compete in the market for hospital medicine and how we can improve the tenders so that generate more competition so that we can still afford to treat everybody who needs medical treatment in the future. <laughs>